Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to customize the look of archive blocks in Squarespace. There are three main types of archive blocks. We have an index, which can be categorized by month, year, author, category, or tag, and optional to show the group count, which is that number right there. We also have an archive list, which again can show these by month, year, author, category, or tag, and again, optional group count if you'd like to show that. And last but not least, we have the drop down, which looks like this until you click on it, and then you'll have those categories or whatever you've selected beneath, again, group count optional. I'm gonna hop into edit mode to show you really quickly how we change that style. If you add an archive block, I'm just gonna double click on this one, selecting display allows you to change the layout to any one of those, and then you can change the title for the drop down specifically, and again, group by all kinds of options and sort by name count activity, however you like to sort that. Now scrolling up here, I'd like to show you for this one, the archive index. If we click on this and select display, you also have the opportunity to show the item date next to it if you're using a blog post or you want to show when a product was released in your store, totally an option. And you can also change the text alignment, multiple columns, plenty of layouts to play around with. What we're gonna do with code today is change up some of the style for the background, the colors, and add just some uniqueness so these archive list, dropdowns, and index stand out a little bit more. I'll go ahead and select Save, and we're gonna to navigate to Design and scroll down to Custom CSS. Now, as always, this whole list of codes, I've listed it in the description below, but let's start off at the very beginning, the entire archive block. This title will apply to all three of these types, I'm going to type it into my custom CSS, this code name here, and let's give all of them a unique border. I'm going to open up a curly bracket here and say border 5px solid purple. If you want to learn more about borders, check out insidethesquare.co forward slash border. I have a breakdown of all of your options here that you can go and check out. But here we are on the demo site here, and we've added a 5px border of purple, and that's been applied to all three types of archive blocks, including the drop down. Pretty interesting, right? Now let's say we wanted to isolate the border just around this dropdown that we clicked on, not the list below. We have a different name to use for that. For that, we need to use archive dropdown toggle label. I'm gonna scroll back up here and we'll replace archive group list with that title. And now it has that solid purple outline. So it's a little difference for you. The dropdown toggle label is for this one. Archive group list is for the entire list or the list uh, archive block itself, <laughs> or this index list here. Now you'll notice the font is right up against the edge there. Let's go ahead and give it some padding, okay? I'm gonna add a semicolon and say padding. Uh, let's go for 10 PX. And we'll add exclamation point important so the browser picks up on our code there. And now the text is pulled in a little bit from the edges for all of those archive blocks. Now, what are some of the other creative things that you can do here? We can give it a uh, border radius to curve in the edges a little bit if we want to. Let's do that for 25 PX, and now it's slightly rounded for us. Let's give it a background color. I've added an RGBA color code for a light purple, and now we can see that it stands out even more against the rest of the content on our site. Now let's say this is great, but you want to make those actual group titles stand out a little bit more in this archive index, or maybe this one down here. Let's change up the font size and the color for that as well. That gets its own name of archive group name link. So I'm going to paste that code name on a new line. Let's scroll back up. I'm going to open up a curly bracket and see font size 20 PX. There we go. And now it's gotten a lot bigger and let's go ahead and change the color to purple. So it matches. All right. And how about we change the font weight as well? I'm going to say font weight, bold. There we go. Now it's bold. Now it really stands out compared to everything else. Now you can get really creative with the font styles and typography settings if you use the name archive group name link. That's the code name for this group link in the index as well as the archive list and inside this drop down here. And again, archive group list is what's going to change the entire block. We use that to add a border, a background color, a little border radius. You can get really creative with that as well, customizing the style. Now, last but not least, I do want to mention archive item link. I'm going to copy this code and we'll scroll back up. The only item links on this page are here in this index, and that's these right here. So let's add a new line and let's go ahead and change the font style for this one. So uh, how about we make it underlined? I've said text decoration underlined, so it's obvious that those are unique links. We can again use any other typography settings, maybe when we want to adjust the size a little bit. So it's 18px instead of the 16 that's on my site. 
Now it's a little bit bigger. Again, we can adjust the font weight as well, like we did with the title. Maybe we wanna make it bold. Totally up to you. Customize the heck out of it using any font or typography settings for archive item link. That's the individual link that's displayed here in this index. So all of these codes are listed in the description below. We've got the entire block, the group name. We didn't touch this one, the archive group count. Guess what that's for? The count, <laughs> you've got it. Again, all typography and font settings will work there. The item link can be uh, isolated and that's the link underneath these group categories in the index view. And then we also have the archive dropdown toggle label that's specifically for this dropdown label. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that code and right up here next to archive group list, I'm just gonna add a comma and paste that code and now the label matches everything else. Pretty interesting, huh? That's actually the dropdown itself. So if you wanna give that a border radius, a unique background color, all kinds of fun stuff, type that in there. If you want to change the style of the font for that, we can go ahead and I'll add a comma after archive group name link. We'll paste it and add a little asterisk and that will actually change the text of the label to match the typography settings for the group name. Did you catch that? We added the drop-down label and then an asterisk to say, hey browser, apply this typography setting to the text for the archive toggle drop-down label. Pretty fun stuff. All right, what were the other names we had here? Oh yeah, to isolate the drop-down list, it does respond to archive group list, but if you have more than one archive block on your page, they all respond to archive group list that title right there. So if you wanna isolate just the drop down and not have anything else get a code change, you can replace it with this whole list right here, or this whole code name, archive block setting layout drop down, archive group list. Now let's scroll up. Just the archive list is going to get the border, padding, border radius, and background color. All of the other ones are gonna be exactly the same, but it's just the archive drop down that gets that style. So pretty interesting pro tip. Again, I'll list these below. To learn more about borders, head on over to insidethesquare.co forward slash borders. I've got all kinds of options there so you can learn a little bit more. But whatever you do with your custom code, just select save when you're done and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this tutorial. Again, the codes we just went over are listed in the description below, but I want to encourage you to get super creative. Change up the colors and the font styles, anything you need to change to make it look amazing on your own website. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. If you liked this tutorial, you'll love my CSS cheat sheet. I put all of my pro tips and custom codes specifically for Squarespace into one PDF, and you can download a copy right now at insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS. That's insidethesquare.co forward slash CSS.